Welcome to the Codeplay Culture Podcast, where we discuss tech, gaming, health, and the world around us. It was our first first time for everything, but you got to start somewhere. I'm sure everyone's uh, doing this by now, so we might as well do it before people are like, hey, why aren't you doing this? Like, oh, that's the old social media from that era that doesn't exist. It's like, oh, you don't podcast? It's like podcasts were so old school. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, welcome everyone. This is uh, episode number one of the um, Code Play Culture Podcast. Um, Logan um, and Rui. Yep. This episode is uh, Less Code, More Impact. Um, and basically what we want to talk about today is just kind of going through um, minimalism in terms of technical debt, uh, code bases, um, writing things once, and um, maybe uh, Rui, you can uh, kick it off a little bit with um, what's been some positive experience in in having less or more or vice versa. Well, positive and having more, I don't think there's positive and having more. My personal opinion, I think more is just too much and it gets very confusing. But by that, uh, with the same token, that could be something we could um, talk about and and dive into further. So is more code better? That depends on the situation. Personally, I think it's terrible. But for somebody who is not really, let's say, a coder or a forward-thinking developer, it could be an aid. If you really think about it, a whole code base um, could be something that's, you know, some kind of like, I don't know, could be some kind manual. of manual. Yeah, like exactly like a manual for a crappy developer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I take like that. The, back. Like I mean, the, a crappy like developer. The, like yeah, the it's like the onboarding is going through the code. Right, exactly. But right. Uh, ultimately, you want to move yourself forward into that space where you're writing less and more efficient. It could be the same code base but condensed. And the smaller it gets, I mean, unlike some things, the smaller code gets the better it is. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I feel like um, a lot of the different companies and, and clients, like can we both work with, um, mm-hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, if it's different in your experience. Um, however, in my experience, the clients that mm-hmm. I'm working with, they're, they're really excited about adding, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, but, um, especially especially um, very new, trendy, up-and-coming applications, mm-hmm. um, there's not really like a flavor I'm seeing for um, can we take a day to refactor and th- the goal of that would be to reduce let's say 100 lines of code that would be the you know the 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 Jira story or the Azure DevOps ticket or right. whatever are you seeing that at all where you know they're like hey this is very important that we feel like you got to spend this time cleaning it right no i have not seen that and from a business standpoint i don't know if it makes fiscal sense to them to mm-hmm. be to be like all right you guys take like a week to you know refactor this code to make it more efficient in a way that mm-hmm. we're not going to see a profit from it may mm-hmm. not be the best thing for them fiscally but i mean as from from our point of view it's it's the right thing to do right and we have to find that balance right. which, which is yeah. difficult i wonder if it's because maybe and i'm i guess I'm just generalizing, but maybe um, developers in general um, aren't communicating the benefits of that to uh, you know the business and senior uh, management and leadership. Mm-hmm. It, it's it all for, in my, in my opinion. What I what I'm seeing is um, no, um, a lot of these clients won't have the appetite for that. However, when it gets to the point where we're having a scaling issue where we can't actually put features in as fast as we want to right. because the code base is so bloated. Um, there seems to be frustration there. Um, and that to me screams, okay, if you, you know, just listen to us from the get go of, you know, I'm saying us as in, you know, this hypothetical uh, metaphorical developer right. trying to petition management for, uh, you know, cl- code cl- cleansing mm-hmm. and, um, because if you if you keep on building like a speedboat into Titanic, yeah. you know the Titanic can't turn on a dime; it's going to hit an iceberg. Absolutely, right? yeah, yeah. No, that makes total sense. Um, maybe it, it falls on our shoulders to 
convince them and show them the the right way. But does that typically end in success? Are we? I mean, from for from my experience, it's it's a futile attempt, right? I feel like yeah. you need a buffer in between. As a developer, we can't just go to the business and say, "Well, I need to refactor, you know, this code and." This is what's going to happen long term. It'll save you a ton of time creating modules or, or programs, but will they accept it? I don't know if if they will accept that from a developer. I mean, my mm-hmm. experience tells me not, but mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think? I, I would agree. It's almost worth not, in most cases, in my opinion, not uh, worth pursuing, mm-hmm. um, you know, letting the business know that, hey, we're going to refactor this. It's almost better if you have a team of developers that you're working with, you kind of pull them aside independently and suggest that, hey, uh, let's spend an hour refactoring. Right. Um, and you can put it in your next PR for the next feature. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it wouldn't be a d- dedicated pull request for um, cl- uh, data cleansing. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's good. I think that's good. Ultimately, it does make sense for sure. Um, I think right off the bat, that is the right approach is to m- put everything to a manageable state um, mm. and a condensed and more you know readable and refactorable, if that's even a word, state mm-hmm. where any developer can pick it up and look at it and say, well, these guys did an amazing job and just carry on that torch. Um, yeah, I think that's great. For sure, yeah. Um, but in terms of writing cleaner code, um, there are a ton of options out there. And I think there's no excuse for writing spaghetti code with the amount of um, you know knowledge and resources we have, right? Right. I wonder if you just upload your code, chat GPT, and, and uh, say, hey, this is what I'm working with. Uh, can you just give me back like a one-liner? Yeah. <laughs> and be like, okay, okay, here's some, here's some uh, obscure... Uh, exc that we compiled this down to and now it's a one-liner it's like that's like the late that's the lazy approach chat gpt takes um that that brings up an interesting idea is the and um i just thought of this now i I don't know if it 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 exists i'm sure it could Mm -hmm. um is you know how when people do pull requests you see a plus lines and minus lines right. per file, right? And you see, I believe you see an overall, meaning how many lines were added. Right. Um, what about the whole um, mentality or methodology of um, that would be a cultural practice adopted by a business to say, okay, we have a net neutral PR policy, mm-hmm. meaning that if there is a PR, um, there will be um, zero lines committed, netted out. Right. So if if you've if you've um, if you've um, you know committed a hundred lines of code, mm-hmm. and you you hit that PR, it'll say plus one hundred, and um, you know the the dev lead comes back and says, I, I'm going to need to see a minus one hundred lines. Right. Um, and then uh, you uh, push uh, commit to that. You were able to refactor a couple functions, maybe just get rid of a lot of white space. Just, just, but if you're, if we're getting to the point now if, as culturally as a business, and if we're, we were doing that, let's say um, if we're finding it really, really hard to, to do that mm-hmm. because we've all re- refactored the heck out of everything. Yeah. Like that seems to be like a good place. Yeah. Right. Like I tried, like I scoured the code base. Right. I spent, let's say, 30 minutes trying to refactor things. I, I only was able to shave two lines off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe as part of the PR process of a, a, a net neutral line check-in. Yeah, It could be like audacious. However, if it's a requirement, and you could even put something in the uh, the pipeline build process for the PR that yeah. says, hey, um, we're, we're, it won't be able to be pushed um, even if it's approved, unless it's net neutral. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what a good idea. No, I think that's a really good idea. Um, we should put that into practice at some point. <laughs> mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's funny. When we talk about like the minimalism, it's always a pipe dream. Right? <laughs> For sure. It's like, it's like um, oh, yeah, we, we should really refactor. Well, you know, everything starts get... with a dream, man. That's that's the way it works, yeah. right? It's, that's very true. A good sentiment, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, it is uh, Valentine's Day right now. And um, I, it? yes, it is. Yes, did you remember? <laughs> of, of course, course you did. Of course, I did. The romantic, the romantic. Uh, so I 
woke up at 2 a.m. this morning, went to bed at midnight. Mm. And uh, this morning, um, <laughs> wife gives um, Valentine's Day to the uh, gifts to the kids. And then that's when I realized it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> when, and, and then the, the kids looked at me and they said, um, did, did you get us something too, dad? And I'm like, I'm like, Shh. I'm like, of course I did. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I, I was, I was not able to, I, I'm not sure how I was that witty at that point on that little sleep. And then, um, Megan, of course is such an age. She's, she says, uh, um, well, everything from me kiddos is also from dad. And then the, the kiddos were like, thank you. And they hugged me after nice. obviously <laughs> hugging her. But, uh, so she saved a uh, situation and, um, you know, but, uh, yeah, it's like the lack of sleep will, uh, will make your minimalism of code maximalism in like bugs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No minimalism it's, when it comes to sleep is not a good thing. No code. Yeah. Yes. Not sleep. You need your sleep, man. Yep. We all need our sleep. But yeah. um, what's your, yeah. Kind of like a de- derailment, derailment a little bit, yeah. but uh, what, what, uh, what time do you go to bed and what time do you wake up? Like on average? Yeah. So on average, week? like midnight till like six thirty or seven o'clock, six, six thirty, I think is the cutoff. That's when I wake up. My body just naturally wakes itself up, but it's not many hours. It's about six, seven hours. And when, when's your last, um, um, cup of coffee or any caffeine, um, throughout the day or any chocolate? I don't eat chocolate typically, but caffeine, let's say my last cup would be around five, six, sometimes yeah. four, but I try not to drink it obviously in the evening or closer to bedtime. Right. Yeah. But, um, Fair enough. it doesn't really keep me up. Honestly, I, mm. I can fall asleep with a cup of coffee. Yeah. That's when I'm asleep uh, right now. I believe <laughs> I'm, I'm asleep too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's like you're caffeine adapted. Yeah. Um, um, Megan sent me something funny, not funny, but is interesting the other day. It's ever when you're falling asleep mm-hmm. and, um, you get these little like shocks or like tremors or little, uh, kicks yeah. or like little leg movements. Apparently what that is, um, she sent a video of someone explaining it. Um, some qualified person mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, um, that was, uh, it's your body is going to sleep before your brain is. Mm-hmm. So what your brain does is it sends a, you know, an electrical current to that to stop it right. from shutting down, which is kind of crazy to think about it. Your body is falling asleep faster than your brain. Yeah. Yeah. That is so kind of nuts. You would think that like you had a very active day. Yeah. Right. And where the opposite might be true. Where your body is like awake, yeah, but your your brain dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, um, yeah, man. So, I, anyways, back to our, our code talk. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, uh, we we uh, went down rabbit hole here. Yeah. Um, so, what can we do to make our code more efficient on a daily? So, let's say daily basis, starting from today. How can we make it better? What can we do first? I think first and foremost, you have to mentally tell ourselves we're going to have a good, a good day today. (laughs) (laughs) That you always start with, it all starts mentally. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're at that, you know, cerebral, cerebral level. We have to say we're going to have a good day today. And then Mm -hmm. of course, let everything kind of fall into place and, uh, just do things proper, set enough time when you're developing something to, to write the code clean and not rush. That's the key. Like don't rush it, write it clean. Um, use structures, use structures that exist, use code that exists. That's obviously optimized and written better than what you can write. Um, just stuff like that. Like don't rewrite the wheel as they say. And Mm -hmm. obviously don't repeat yourself. That old programming acronym dry. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like also solid and all the, all of these other. Yeah. What um, does solid stand for? I can't remember. I think I have to look it up. I think it's like single, single use principle or something like that. Yeah. It, it's um, I think it's the, the whole duality. Um, I might have to like <laughs> make a note to add mm-hmm. a correction to the next no- note if, uh, or show if I'm saying this wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think it's uh, you know, the whole um, loosely coupled versus um, uh, tightly bound. Ah, right. Okay, so, okay. so um, but then there's the I think solid is like the single. Uh, there, there's like a 
it's an acronym of you know uh, each each letter is a word like right. single use and then it goes through but there's been like on a, on, on a lot of the um dotnet rocks podcast they had mm-hmm. a bunch of people on there saying that well like when solid came out like that was back when you know code was in a very different place than it is right. now however they've been bringing that methodology along for the ride almost like it was you know stone tablets yeah that that were unchanging right um and so some people are kind of like you know there's more modern i guess ways of thinking about um you know that kind of uh you know, code reuse and mm-hmm. not breaking things. It, it, it's uh, and then the uh, the single use thing is like you, you can get hosed either way. I find where if um if you have everything using let's say the same objects, yeah, then if you make a change somewhere, mm-hmm. then it breaks everything. Yeah, right. Uh, or if you have the opposite, where let's say every page on a website has its own, you know, like DTO or some kind of object or class. Yeah, then you know, you make a change to that page or that model or detail, it will essentially only break there. Right. Now right. that, that will, will have way more code, right? For sure. So yeah. you have like huge amount of code uh, because of, um, and then there's this whole thing of, okay, well, we don't want to break everything every time we make a change, mm-hmm. but we don't want to have tons of code. Right. Like what would be the middle path through that? And for me in, personally in the past year it's really been source code generators yeah because um with those um and for those that don't know um you know roslyn c c sharp source code generators uh roslyn is the i guess the um open source um, underlying engine in visual studio um and um you know you can tap into a lot of stuff and and uh commit prs to it and and all that as far as i'm aware and so you can imagine like, let's say, for example, very simply, you have a, a table like in entity framework core or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like a user table, conceptually yeah. easy to think about. And then let's say you wanted to make a DTO, right? Mm-hmm. And imagine you could just add a data annotation to that user um, domain um, object. And it would just automatically create the user DTO. Now, in this example, it would take every column from the table and just make a DTO. So what's the point of the DTO? Right. But it's just a brief example of like, hey, um, we don't have to keep, uh, you know, the, the like, we don't have to write this by hand. Right. right. And then so every time you'd add that annotation, it would just make new files. Yeah. So I really feel like. With, with getting back to the minimalism in the business, um, yeah, there, there's, in my opinion, there's no appetite for um, refactoring or reduction in code. Yeah. However, and in the amount of code or the net neutral thing is probably like a pipe dream as well, mm-hmm. right? So, it, it, you know, assume that we're going to add like globally or whatever it is, like, you know, trillions of lines of code over the next X amount of years, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> So it would be nice to like ramp up like crazy and have a lot of the code generation do that for you. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's nice when it's organized, right? It's nice when you have all proper classes, all that stuff, but I really want to type that out by hand. No, of course not. Of course not. And things like that can only be done initially at um, a planning phase of a new software, but yeah, retrofitting stuff like that's incredibly difficult, right? going back and, and changing code is just time consuming and it's, you know, budget constraints and there are all kinds of factors. Right. But for sure. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Having code generators is probably the way of the future. To be honest, it's, it's that step that we all need to take to kind of write that manageable, you know, concise, just, you know, bite-sized code for not just us for future developers. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I do like about source code generators in general is that um, if you have like a certain, I, f- I feel like um, a lot of developers, they have this want to have like perfect code. Um, I would say majority of them probably ha- like like to have their code super clean right. and it look nice, right? When you're, because if you love what you do, you probably like, okay, that, that looks good to me. I, I love this. Like if you love what you wrote and it looks cool and it's organized and you have the time to keep it clean, mm-hmm. um, then 
with source code generators, you can like ensure that the outputted code is like perfect. Yeah. No like um, extra white space, any of that stuff. Right. So w- why send a human to do the job of a robot kind of thing, right? right? right. Um, but if we can think about it, then we can just have the, you know, chat GPT, source code generators, all this stuff do a lot of that for us. Yeah, I know I get, I get this like little, this pleasure when I'm formatting my code. You know, when you kind of mm-hmm. develop something and you get it to work, spend hours, yep. maybe days, possibly weeks mm-hmm. on getting some process to work. And it finally works. You're ecstatic. You're super happy. You haven't formatted it, but you spend the next hour happily formatting that because it just, yeah. <laughs> just works and you're just so happy formatting. It just, I'll just indent this. It just feels so good. That's but so uh, I just love that feeling. It's funny. <laughs> it's, that is so true. I never thought, I never even like thought about like brought that to the forefront with like you know when you shine light on something yeah the the light of uh awareness i'm like i'm like listen i spent six hours slaving over this and it's a mess right like everything's everywhere yeah. right and you're like i earned i earned the ability to clean this up now. <laughs> exactly. but it's so weird because it'll never be like that for like a meal or like cooking or something like if i cooked a big meal and like, it was like, it was amazing. I took like two hours, like I love cooking. Yeah. And then we, ate, we ate as a family and then everyone's around the table <laughs> looking at each other, like who's going to clean up. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But, absolutely. but with coding, but with coding, can you imagine if it was like that for like that situation with, mm-hmm. with the uh, dinner and eating. So I everyone mean, finishes, nice. yeah. yeah. everyone finishes. And then, and then you look your wife right in the eye or, and, or you know, your significant other and say, um, Oh, that, that was perfect. I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and tidy the heck out of this thing. I'm going to love the kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to go now. format like, that this kitchen. Ki- I'm going to love that, it. that kitchen. That kitchen isn't, it now has like another level. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like got stairs. Yeah. Uh, you know, but unlike that, food yeah. programming is like a drug, as you know, it's, yep. it becomes an addiction. It's not, yep. I've never done drugs, but yeah, I can imagine that's that feeling, you know, that sure. that addiction, and then that high when you get, when you kind of when you finally finish that um, that program and, and everything works and yep. it works exactly the way the that you want it to work. It's that feeling, man. You know, you know it very mm-hmm. well. Yeah, like uh, the you you find that like leading up to the dopamine release of like, okay, I did it. Now I have to refactor. Yeah. Um. Or like co- like I'm gonna organize it now, and I'm happy sometimes that period when you're like, if you get stuck and you're trying to fake it, you can't find like examples online. You have no one you can call to figure it out. Like does it, is it just me or for you? Does it also feel like you're kind of like bashing your head against a wall? Like it, it hurts almost like yeah. right in the, when you're trying to like, um, you, yeah, like tunnel vision. What else is it? What else yeah. is it? Oh, for sure, man. That um, happens to me all the time. Um, especially, you know, you finish something and, what else could you do? Then there's mm. something else. And what else, how can you make it, you know, a little bit better? And then mm. they're like, they're blind spots in your code all the time. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I take a little bit of pleasure in finding those blind spots. Mm. I don't know what it is, but you know, I find a little blind spot and I fix it. It just feels yeah. like those little release. Like you said, those little releases of dopamines, but they come in these little yep. spurts and then mm. kind of tight together. And, uh, it just feels amazing. And honestly, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Um, yeah. Except, you know, as a career except uh coding i love it it's yeah. just the greatest um, for anybody out there thinking of becoming a developer um do it it's the best job. definitely <laughs> it is yes um speaking of that <laughs> like now that they have chat gpt um sorry now that they have dolly too make um you know making a lot of artists feel like mm-hmm. you know they're feeling it um there's now some stuff will, which will I think Google has something that will generate, you know, um, music right on the fly. Oh yeah. Right. It'll just make you a whole song. So that now producers, composers are all like that. Um, so my question is how long until you think it'll be this year or when will it be that you'll just go to open AI and you'll say generate website Mm -hmm. and mobile apps for this idea and create a, uh, company uh, global or in Canada and file patents for, and you just enter your credit card and it spins the oh, whole goodness. thing. Do you like this concept? Do you like this concept? How, how, how close are we for not recommending people to get into programming? No, we're not that close. We're very far from that. The amount of red tape 
behind all that you just said mm-hmm. would just be insane. Um, mm. It's one thing to create a song or create a shell of a website or even a mm-hmm. website. Everything chat G- GPT can do, you can literally go and copy and paste it from somewhere else, right? Like Very true. Create a website. Like stack Overflow. Yeah, you can just copy and paste or whatever code yep. you look for. Yes, you know, the intricacies are, you know, it'll, it'll output those intricacies and it'll save you time in researching, but you will eventually find that information um, Googling stuff or looking stuff up on the internet. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, it's it's further development over time. Yes, it's going to probably at some point, you know, you're going to tell it to make an app that can, you know, track satellites. It'll generate an app for you. But uh, as far as creating a business and, and that's a little more, you know, a lot of red tape in that in that yeah. industry, right? But technical stuff, yeah, I think I think uh, we should tell our kids to get into blue collar work, perhaps carpentry or mm. <laughs> mechanics or something. Yeah. Because it's going to change. It's going to change the landscape, right? Mm. Yeah, it is a little bit weird sitting and staring at screens all day. Yeah. And then as soon as you're done staring at this screen right now, Rui, you're going to go downstairs, have dinner with your family, and then you're going to stare at a different screen. Could be your phone, could be Television. like a TV, whatever it is. And then after you've watched that different screen, you'll probably go to bed and look at a different screen. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty this, bad, but uh, I typically yeah. don't like to stare at screens for too long. I mm. read a lot. I read nice. a lot of books, man. On an iPad? <laughs> okay, so I almost got you there. <laughs> okay, so books, right? Like physical, physical books. I do, yeah, okay, I do yeah. read a lot. Every night. Okay, I'm, cool. uh, yeah, every night. Every night I read, man. Every single night. Maybe that's why you can sleep. For at least an hour or two. So I don't spend, I mean, the problem is all the time in between. I'm staring at screens too, right? Like all day. Yep. And then television and then, uh, you know, reruns of old game shows and a lot of a lot of stuff I shouldn't be watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how long would it take you to watch all of YouTube? Dude, right? Price if, is if it, right, if man. If it's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What's that guy's name? You like... Uh, Bob Barker. Yeah, Bob Barker. And then Happy it was uh, the other, yeah, I know <laughs> the price is wrong. Um, yeah, it's like I was those people on prices, right? Where they're like, um, uh, 200, 400, 300, <laughs> 301 cent. And, and then the guy just looks over, it's like, you <laughs> like, <laughs> was that, it, was that it like part? Like, of prices, right? Yeah, it's like, and they always get it, and they're like, oh, good thing I went last. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, um, Oh man, it's a what a scam! I don't know, it's it's a big scam. Yeah, it's a casino. Yeah, so no so money. so that's it, man. That's uh, that's these are some good ideas, and uh, for sure, anybody looking to get into develop, developer work, um, send me your resume. No, I'm just kidding. Don't send me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not hiring. Yeah, you. fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, it is it is good. Um, you know, there's tons of people still getting into this stuff, and um, I feel in in my opinion. Um, I, I just have this feeling that a lot of developers are feeling that, oh shoot, chat GPT, right? Yeah. Um, should I be worried kind of stuff? There was, um, a colleague of mine asked for, um, it's like, Hey, have you had any experience programming against this, um, this particular Google API? Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, I, I sent him, oh yeah, this is a code snippet, right. Against this. Um, I, I think it was like. Uh, Google Maps API, or uh, I can't remember because Google has a bunch of them, yeah. right? Bunch of APIs, and um, he, he's like, he's such an awesome guy. Like, he's like, I would hang out with them, like, you know, you know, one of those awesome dudes, like work aside, programming aside, just yeah. real chill dude. And he's like, wow, this is so good. You sh- you should put it in Stack Overflow. And and I was like, I was like, thanks, man. Maybe I will. I didn't have the heart to tell him at the time. I was like, like, and then it ate at me, and I had to message him and be like, hey, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, No, honestly, (laughs) man, I think that uh, the media has blown it out of proportion as in in Mm. typical fashion. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I don't think we have to worry for another, what what do you think? 30 years? Yeah. I think we're, it's our kid's problem. Yeah. It's our kid's problem. We're going to retire, you know, using whatever we use. PHP, right? That's, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's just like pure C++. Um, (laughs) unsafe uh memory access like there's so much uh, nice things about i'm not sure if it's c plus plus or well you know the low level uh languages where mm-hmm. you can really get into hot water of like accessing um like a memory allocation that's you know 
yeah. already, you know, in flight or like some kind of unsafe right. thing where like C sharp is, it protects you from all, all that. It's like, um, it's like the, um, it's like the world is on fire, mm-hmm. right? And and C sharp is like a nice bus that you're on, and the driver is <laughs> like guy from Microsoft. He's like, you like you like uh, the curly braces, and then all the kids are like, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like it's, um, but uh, it's kind of nice because as these higher and higher levels of like abstractions over whatever it compiles down to, yeah. like assembly or whatever, like of course it's going to get more and more. Um, easier to write like why create another level higher yeah. like um i'm not sure if you, have you seen um the language kotlin no oh kotlin right that's um google's yeah google's language right it's the is it java replacement I, yeah I, yeah i don't know I, I know that it's like either java based or java replacement mm-hmm. or or just a better way or an easier way of writing that stuff but yeah it, it really like uh for um i feel like if 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 there's someone out there that loves um, C sharp mm-hmm. and they're looking for like, like a mobile native kind of language yeah. for Android or, you know, whatever it is like, that's a really good, it's a really elegant language. Mm-hmm. If you look at some of the code examples. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of interesting to think of like when, when we do this, we do it in our own little, um, C sharp or VB or whatever the Microsoft bubble, yeah. right. Or the, or a PHP or but then you you kind of almost don't have the context of like what is this like to write this in Go yeah, or yeah. whatever it is, right? But uh, it's kind of interesting to like when you look at how I'm sure Microsoft does that too, where if they're implementing a feature, mm-hmm. th- they probably go around and see, all right, who's got the best like way of doing this, right. and then they'll. It's almost best to be last in that regard. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I think that's a good. That's for sure. That, that makes sense because uh, you know you get you get to pick. Right, you get to pick which one's a better solution and implement it. Right, um, Microsoft is really good at doing that, as you know. Right, that's right. that's why they're so successful. Yeah, but no, it's good. I I think it's good that they do that. Right, good for the end user and good for the developer and people mm-hmm. using their tools. Right, we need yep. that uh, that built upon or that um, you know that strong foundation uh, to build. Right, or for them. They need the strong foundation to build on for us to have a strong foundation and something to work yeah. with, right? But yep. um, yeah, man, Microsoft's, I don't know, man. People talk a lot about, you know, put them down, but they're doing amazing stuff when it comes to developer or developing in, in environments. Yeah. It's almost like I lost they my train of thought lot. with that whole. Yeah, fair enough. Whole it's almost like they, sp- <laughs> <laughs> they spend a lot of their um, time just trying to uh, re. Um, established respect in the community right because of the, what happened in the past they have a lot of people like oh no that's microsoft that's uh corporate that's you know not open source there's some people i i still believe that you know don't know that microsoft's you know dot net's open source and all that stuff they just think it's all windows yeah. you know um you know and the things like Ma- sorry no no go on i'm sorry i interrupted i was gonna say the things like maui we we just like write you know, yes, yes. something in Blazor and it just publishes six different apps. Yeah, you know, like that's amazing. Incredible. Yeah, no, I do. I do love the way they do things. And honestly, man, I, end of the day, I don't know. Love is such a strong word. I don't maybe I don't love it. You know, I love other things, but not Microsoft per se. But <laughs> um, I'd like you, you got to use the right tool for the job, man. It, my, my opinion is know everything. Right. And use everything to your advantage when it comes to this, you know, this um in this line of work use everything to your advantage use your microsoft use your php and whatever google go kotlin and java whatever you can use use it that is uh my 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 stance on that so you do you do a bunch of work in other languages right and i think more so than i um are you finding that when you see like examples of like um, any other language other than C sharp, or when you look at a project like a PHP project or any other web project, yeah. um, are you finding that code base in terms of technical debt is like much higher on the Microsoft side um, in terms of like how many projects there are yeah. or, you know, like, wh- uh, what do you think? Like, do you think that based on what you're developing in now or the languages that you see, like, mm-hmm. are they, are they, is it easy to get sucked into, you know, 
that create a new file, create a new project, create a new, like everything's new, new, new. Yeah, no, I think Microsoft does have a huge footprint when it comes to, uh, you know, code, code, I guess, uh, a code footprint, a code print. It's huge. Yeah. And uh, compared to like other languages, like PHP, for example, has a, I think they're, it doesn't do the same things. You know, PHP is a lot, has a lot less functionality than, than like a .NET. But um, on a whole, I think it's, it's a lot more, I guess has a lot less code print <laughs> than Microsoft. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Microsoft's just, it's a behemoth, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, I think PHP is a little bit easier and, and obviously scripting languages are easier, but um, yeah, Java, Java and C sharp are kind of the same thing. I worked a lot in uh, obviously VBA and VB and that is a little more condensed than C sharp. Um, and I think I think Microsoft wants to mimic VB, right? They want to kind of switch, yeah, or mimic VB I, and noticed, C sharp, right? Like, I've noticed that where like remove you know, the curly braces and, and stuff. Yeah, like that. A lot, the curly braces are coming off a lot yeah. lately with new C sharp versions, and they're using things like and and not. Yes, exactly. Um, and the kind of real language. Uh, th- those are the features I love from like VB.net, VB, yeah, uh, VBA is like it's just like, kind of easy to read. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, with the curly braces off, sometimes it's like, you know, you can't really tell like where this is going. Yeah. Like, but then you have things like, like crazy where like, not, like YAML where of like an extra space, it just doesn't compile. It doesn't work yeah. because it's actually, you know, it, it will mean something completely different if right. there's an extra space. Like Python, whatnot. right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, oh, Python's like that. Yeah. Off. It, um, have you programmed in F sharp? Uh, no, no, I haven't. That was um, no, I never, I never actually touched that or saw the code. I'm not sure what it looks it's like. A, it's it's F is for functional. I, I've never programmed in it, but uh, I wonder if it's like um, Python. Or like, mm-hmm. is Python a lot of like? Is it a lot of functional? Um, I think Python is. Uh, what does Python remind me of? It reminds me of. Reminds me of C, mm. <laughs> plain old C, man. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know, or maybe C C plus plus, right? Yeah. But the, yeah, it's indentation. You know, obviously matters. Yeah, it matters. Um, there's another programming language that I programmed in. Um, can't remember off the top of my head, but it was crappy. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> right. It was during my oh. college, and uh, we used it for statistics. The stats class. Mm. It was called. It was called R. R. Yeah, R. Right. Yeah. And that was. Uh, yeah, that's a bit weird, yeah right? it was weird, man. But no, I saw a video on um, this this programming language called Malborg. Right. It yeah. was such a cool cool video, and <laughs> it's uh it's a crazy language, and one day I'll learn it. One day. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's just yeah. it interests me. I don't know. I don't know what I, it is about I, it. I watched I watched that video of it. It's like I watched it like a couple times. I didn't know what was going on. And then um, I went back to it to like watch it like a third time. And I was like, oh, you made this video. (laughs) I I didn't realize it was just like, um, not that I'm saying like it's your stuff is recognizable. Like it's like, oh, this is definitely a Rui video. Yeah. It was just, it it was just, it just hit me on this weird, like we're in the matrix uh, level. Yeah, It was very abstract and yeah, my face wasn't in it, but. uh... Right. Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, It's a weird, weird. We're kind of talk cool about language. condensed code. That would be uh, the opposite of anything normal or condensed. <laughs> yeah, I think there's also uh, was it um, uh, Fireship did um, like it was a walkthrough on F U K T or something. Oh, it was I a think language I remember that where one, yeah. yeah, where it's like it's just so hard to write. Mm. <laughs> well, one guy made it as like uh, okay, I'll make this thing. It's like. <laughs> It's like so um, deliberately. Okay, let's make something go viral. Let's make a language of like, is it? Oh, is it better, more uh, fast, easier? And like, no, everything's way hard. Mm-hmm. That 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 was the whole yeah um, effort as a joke kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. if it's on Fireship, um, then it made it, man. It's prime Absolutely, time. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Let's make it on Fireship, man. Let's create something it's crazy. A, yeah, it's, it's like uh, Microsoft. Uh, kind of, they were all excited on their one of the last uh, community standups like a couple weeks ago yeah they were talking about how 
when Fireship did uh, Blazor mm-hmm. as a spa framework. Yeah. And it was, they, they like lost their, they're like, oh, they're doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was kind of big for them um, to be kind of recognized in that space because, as you know, Fireship, he's like, you know, more trendy, modern spa frameworks, yeah. JavaScript libraries, all, all that up and coming stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, to be kind of put in there, like he's not, we're not, I mean, it, there's trickles of Blazor in his stuff, but not as much as everything else that's right. out there. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I do feel that Microsoft's looking at like all of those different JavaScript spa frameworks that Fireship, you know, covers and like, oh, what cool features um, can we put? in there yeah right. cool but i mean the one thing about the code getting back to code minimalism yeah um is that's one thing i i truly feel that you know blazer shines on with microsoft is that um you know before or not before like essentially if you have let's say a react project and let's say you have a dotnet core um open api swagger um you know, set of API controllers or minimal, uh, minimal APIs, then you can use like NSwag or some kind of um, uh, source code generator, to generate a TypeScript client mm-hmm. for the React uh, front end. Yeah. Right. So it, that, that in Blazor, you can still do, it'll just generate the C sharp one. Um, that will also generate like models and DTOs in TypeScript. Mm-hmm. Right. But with, Blazor, because you can have like a shared project between the API and the front end yeah. and just put your DTOs in it. Um, and it's just all C sharp, meaning that you don't have to take the C sharp and transcompile it down to TypeScript. Mm-hmm. And then like, you know, there's no, there's no serialization, so to speak, yeah. like um, conceptually because, you know, like everything, well, I guess everything's like JSON. So, it, you know, across the wire, in HTTP one and, and two. Mm-hmm. Um, so like if you, you don't want to necessarily serialize it a different way and have like variability in serialization. And, yeah. you know, if you, then the other cool thing is like, if you have a shared project between your front end and your back end in Blazor, then let's say you have a um, company DTO with, um, you know, a company name and a company type. Yeah. If you wanted to add another property on there, like, company icon class um let's say it's like a view model or something Mm -hmm. as soon as you add it to that shared project they both get the benefit yeah so the the back end could populate it or the front end could populate it you know whatever Mm -hmm. but uh, it's just kind of nice because it's all c sharp right um yeah yeah man that's good well what time is it? Are we uh, are we on time? Yes. Are we, what, yeah, it's pr- pretty good. What do we do? What, so um, I can't see a timestamp anywhere. Uh, Forty two minutes. Oh so wow, that's yeah, that's good for now. Um, so basically, um, try to do this once a week and um, um, kind of going over like really, what, what are we going to go over? What are the four things that code play? You know, anyone watching this first episode, it's like, hey, do I? continue watching uh, yeah. what, what else are these guys going to talk about all right so so basically our our um topics for this show are as follows we are going to speak about programming coding in general which we did today and various you know technical topics not limited to programming i mean we could talk about artificial intelligence it, it's it's a whole gambit of technical aspects of society we will talk about We'll talk about culture, um, origin of words, uh, sociological impact of of you know of language and um, and mannerisms. Um, we're we're also going to talk about um, games, video games, um, in game philosophy, um, you know, lore, um, architecture of video games, and the hardware that plays them. Um, another topic would be pharmacology. Uh, we're going to talk about genetics, uh, routine diets, supplements, toxins, recovery, and mental health. So these are the wide range of topics we're going to speak about and delve into them deeply for the hour that we have together. Right. And the um, technology example, part plays in all of them as well. Yes, exactly. So if there's a technology change, the entertainment will change. If there's a health change, then 
potentially technology right. all change, right? They're all kind of like a Venn diagram yeah. of this podcast. Maybe that should be the- uh, That's what we're, we're going to create next, a Venn diagram. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Mm-hmm.